Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Taramap and I have, I hope, an interesting video to uh, share with you and this video is going to introduce to those people who don't know anything about it um, the astrological mandala and the Sabian symbols. Um, the Sabian symbols can be treated as an oracle but and they actually are quite incredible in a descriptive ability to um, be used as exploration of your own astrological chart. So um, I was actually really surprised. I was doing a reading, a uh, life path reading for a client and um, somehow, so I don't even remember how, but I reached out for um, this book by Dana Rugia uh, to check one of her Sabian symbols, which I haven't done in years. And uh, you know that I've been studying astrology since 2005. And um, when I started working as an astrologer, when I started doing readings, actually um, I used a lot of Sabian symbols. I used to, um, which in my opinion, I used to put a lot of things into chart reading. And at some point when I was gaining my experience, I realized that it was just too much stuff for a client to, you know, take on. So I stopped using Sabian symbols. And uh, I remember how much I got fascinated when I heard about Sabian symbols and their stories. And, um, you know, kind of for years, um, you know, these books were just lying on the side of my shelf. And these books, uh, this was both of those books I bought in Australia. And that they are probably vintage now <laughs> okay maybe let's not you know over exaggerate but this book was published um first edition is in 2000 well the first edition is 1995 special edition was 2002 and um i'm not sure when this one came out it has to be at some point you know um when i was living in australia so at some point before 2011, I think it would have been maybe beginning of 2000s anyway. So, uh, you know, I was interested, right? I was buying these books and um, I was using those books and I was using Sabian symbols. And then after forgetting about them for so many years and then coming back to them because of this reading I did for the client, I realized that the symbols have grown, you know, which showed me, of course, that I have grown, I have evolved. And the way I understood the symbols back then, when I was much younger, and how they made an impact on me yet again, when I'm like 45 now, was pretty incredible to just witness, you know. So um, I tell you quickly uh, how the like, little story of the Sabian symbols, you know, where uh, what's the story behind them and what are they, okay? So the symbols were uh, actually born in San Diego. So I think Jennifer Ball, Jennifer Ball, I don't think she watches my videos anymore, but Jennifer Ball, I think if you ever see this, you live in San Diego, I think. You can go to Bilboa Park or Balboa, but Balboa Park, right? You can go there and there's a special place somewhere there <laughs> because there, that's where the Sabian symbols got born. So Mark Edmund Jones, um, I don't have his book actually on the symbols, but he was the astrologer and occultist that um, created the symbols and wanted 360 degrees of the zodiac to have each of them a symbol. And he asked uh, a very well-known and apparently amazing clairvoyant, Elsie uh, Wheeler, to come with him to meet up with him and envision um, something, right? Like a vision, to have a vision for each degree of the zodiac. So they met together and they met in the Balboa Park um, and they created all the 360 the set of 360 degree symbols for in one day in 1925. So he, what he, how he did it, he used a set of blank cards and um, he only wrote on the cards 
degree and uh, zodiacal sign. So for example, one Sagittarius, two Sagittarius, three Sagittarius, you know, like every sign has 30 degrees. And he would shuffle the cards, the blank cards, and he would pick one and put it in front of the clairvoyant Elsie and she would come up with a description. And the description could be anything like, for example, I'm just going to read from Dane Rugier. So Taurus 17 would be a symbolical battle between swords and torches or an old teacher fails to, inter, uh, to interest his pupils in traditional knowledge or head covered with a rakish silk hat muffled against the cold, a man braves a storm. So she would have these visions, which then he would write down on the back of the cards and that would be like a uh, an oracle for the degree of the zodiac, okay? And so they did it completely in one day. So they did like apparently the set of 90, then they had a break, then they did another set of 90, they took a drive around, they came back to the park, to the, took another uh, set of 90 cards and then another of 90 and by the end of the day, they did the whole thing. So later on, uh, Jones, Mark Edmund Jones, which was a very famous astrologer and his students, they started using the symbols, adding them to astrological uh, you know, charts placing them on the charts. Then Dane Rudyard, who was, you know, really famous um, and um, amazing astrologer as well. He was coming from the more maybe humanistic uh, approach um, and spiritual approach. He asked Mark Edmund Jones for permission to also, you know, involve the symbols and start doing, started doing research and using the symbols in his work. Um, Mark Edmund Jones wrote a book in 1953, which was a bit more maybe using the symbols in a more predictive way. Um, but then Dane Rugia wrote also this astrological mandala above the 360 degrees of the zodiac um, 20 years later after Mark Edmund Jones. And he came up with the whole system and um, like from more humanistic and spiritual perspective. So, um, he's done a lot of research and a lot of investigation that, you know, working with charts and using the symbols. And this book is pretty amazing. So if you're interested in this, you can check this book. And then uh, Linda Hill, um, an Australian astrologer, she also has done um, research and he was re she was really drawn to the Sabian symbols and she does readings based on Sabian symbols. And, and she did it in Australia and um, published this book and there was also a set of cards um, so um, you know I met Lydia, uh, Linda at some point because I've met a lot of Australian uh, astrologers because I studied there right and she had also a fascinating stories to tell about um, Sabian symbols so uh, just to share you know that kind of brief story and then I can share a few of the symbols with you so what I did I just looked at degrees of my planets and um, you've got to be careful here because uh, if for example your sun is at six degrees 13 minutes you would use the degree seven of the Sabian symbol so it wouldn't you wouldn't see six you would only look at six if it was six zero zero okay uh, but six zero one it would be the seven so you would go for uh, like up a degree so, for example, um, like the degree of my moon, which is 23 something Libra, um, in Sabian symbols, it would be 24. And that's also the degree of my IC. And it says a butterfly with a third wing on its left side. So you can, I just, you know, when I hear those things, my imagination is like bubbles. Like I see the image, you know, I imagine like this oracle in old temples and you know there's this just sentences which seemingly sometimes make no sense but when you start you know taking them apart so in this book you would look for the degree and it has um you know like a keynote and it has some um spiritual kind of background to it it's really quite high vibe uh, so what I wrote, uh, I just read all of this, but I picked some things for me, you know, which could be important now because I've got Pluto square moon right now. So I wanted to discover um, some of the correlation, like see another angle to what I could maybe um, 
like explore deeper or what I could develop or transmute or just you know get to get to know about this transit from yet another perspective because sometimes we get stuck of like oh yeah empowerment empowerment like you know what does it mean to me now so with this butterfly with the third wing um, on its left side so the ability to develop for inner strengthening new modes of response to basic life situations and we're talking about the moon we're talking about instinctual biological kind of planet but also a changeable planet right a cyclical planet planet and there's this ability for the butterfly to grow another wing so it can respond to different situations in life in a different way maybe support itself more or help itself butterfly is a symbol for the process of spiritual rebirth often a symbol of our soul and transitions transformation right three wings is a special development of an aspect of the spiritual life um in this particular case three from the inrugia is a symbol of fulfillment creativity i also added alchemical heart you know all this um triplicity right the triple flame the masculine the feminine the child or the godmother um godmother father right so some power has been added to the normal spiritual life of an individual and the left side is the instinctual field of consciousness and the heart side as well so a new strength is shown perhaps unrealized so so it's up to me to really realize the strength and um they also have like those keywords and it said original mutation you know like um, and then i read this and i'm thinking like wow i don't remember <laughs> thinking about it so deeply when I was actually doing those second symbols years ago you know and I thought I was then also really kind of excited about astrology so I was studying all the time and I think now the time has come when I can really like sit down so for example the Sabian symbol of my Venus right which is very close to my moon so my moon is on 23 and my Venus is on 21 Libra um, a child giving birds a drink at a fountain a child giving birds a drink at a fountain i just like drew a little child fountain and birdies <laughs> but the concern of simple souls for the welfare and happiness of less evolved beings who thirst for life renewal that comes all from the book so fountain is a symbol in the Rudyard's book but also linda hills there gives li the life bestowing water to the thirsting birds and fountain is man-made right so there are other symbols where there's maybe a sea or something natural which is the source of that kind of water which is the spiritual substance here is the man-made and there's birds and the child child and birds implies spontaneous naive uh, rapport at the spiritual level a soul touch at the level of pure feeling so something na like naive like ideal like pure innocent and also what you received from the infinite infinite from that water you can give to others that thirst for it solicitude would be the kind of keyword for um, my venus and venus speaks about relationships and it speaks about um connections to others also about the sacred feminine connections to other women and so so you know you, i started thinking of myself in those um degrees and um i was going through like all my you know all my planets all the degrees and then i decided i could do also progressions then i thought oh i could do also transit and see maybe the degrees of the planets that are in transit right now and how they apply to my natal planets and then i did also sidereal astrology and so like you know um, in the sidereal astrology i'm a scorpio so how how these degrees fit in as my like evolutionary astrology or is it more like the it's really really interesting so <clears throat> i just thought i'm going to share this as an inspiration for you i'm thinking even of maybe offering some readings uh, for people who will know because you know if you're interested you can do it yourself but i know that a lot of people you know 
don't have time, don't want to buy those books to just do a reading for themselves. But it's quite a fascinating way to look at oneself. And especially when you can also add the transits that maybe are going through, you are going through now, the cycles. Uh, so I thought maybe I'm going to offer a reading with those um, astrological uh, symbols. I just, yeah, I have to figure out how to do it because it's a... Um, I, I think it would be better in writing. I just don't like the email readings. So I have to figure out what would be the best for a person to receive it. And um, or maybe it would be a recorded reading and then maybe like a link to... Um, hmm, yeah, see? <laughs> anyway, the Mercury went into Aquarius and I'm already like... Dee -dee 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 -dee. So yeah. This is what I wanted to share, the Sabian symbols. And I think if you know about Sabian symbols, you will know how fascinating they are. If not, you can find out for yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure this book is readily available. I'm not sure about the Linda Hill's book. It might be out of print. Um, but um, yeah, Dan Rudier's book or Mark Edmund Jones might be something for you to look at. And um, there's also probably some website when you can check things out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was like, you know, going into the rabbit hole and checking all this stuff for myself. And um, now I'm also thinking like of how I can use cards to add to that and to explore it deeper. Um, and I really want to confirm and compare the sidereal and, uh, you know, Western astrology and to see which uh, do I resonate with more? Um, which symbols speak maybe to me on, you know, maybe they will be on different levels, on different layers. Yeah, it's fascinating. So um, because I'm excited and inspired by it, I thought I'm going to share. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about it? Did, did you know anything about Sabian symbols? If so, maybe you have any interesting articles or pages or books to share. It would be lovely to know. And um, if you didn't, uh, are you interested? <laughs> you know. Uh, and um, I can give you another example before I go. For example, my vocation point and my Chiron, uh, which sits on my vocation point, um, the... This is in the sidereal astrology, and it says, um, the, 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 you know, the degree says, a majestic rock formation resembling a face, I just straight away felt, felt of, uh, thought of, you know, crystal skulls and my connection to stones, but a majestic rock formation resembling a face is idealized by a boy who takes it as his ideal of greatness, and as he grows up, begins to look like it. How cool are these degrees? So then when you read about it, it says the power of clearly visualized ideals to mold the life of the visualizer. And the keyword was archetypaliz archetypalization. That, you know, um, I would be having those visions and I would be able, if I choose to, um, and look at life from, especially at my vocation and my, you know, wounding and to look from the archetypal perspective and that if I have clearly visualized ideals, I will be able to actually, they will be able to mold my life and um, I become like them, you know? I, it's, I don't know, I find it fascinating. It's, it's inspiring. It's kind of like, oh, wow, could I do that? Like, what would I visualize then, you know? It's really, I feel like we so powerful and one of the other degrees from my astrology uh, it was actually my Chiron degree so this is really interesting because this is from the western chart and I only chose a quote I think from Linda Hill's uh, book um, because on my Chiron degree, degree the, the symbol is the possibility for man to gain experience at two levels of being and um, the possibility of evolution, right? And I chose this quote, man can only truly experience what he deeply believes he can experience. And this is something that I truly want to practice in 2021. That's why I picked the word thrive, because sometimes we like, limit ourselves so much, or we have this, um, 
blockades which like okay i can go up to here but like beyond there it's hard to imagine and i want to be able to imagine because you can experience only what you can truly believe that you can uh, and these symbols i think came at this time because it's somehow you know important for me to go back to them since i've known that uh, i've known them for years um so let me know let me know your thoughts i'm curious much love bye